r slash no sleep the town that watches you i've spent months trying to convince myself that none of it was real but the scars run too deep duskfall is not a place i found it found me and it hasn't let go since it started like most mistakes in my life born out of boredom and curiosity i was at a low point everything in my life falling apart my girlfriend had left me my job was on the rocks and i just wanted to get away to disappear for a while that's when i came across a post on a dark obscure forum talking about hidden places places you weren't meant to find there were mentions of duskfall people swore it didn't exist on any map it was the kind of place that seemed to pull you in when you were at your weakest the few who posted about it warned others to stay away, saying the town had its own set of rules, rules you had to follow if you wanted to leave. But no one could ever give precise directions. It always seemed to be one of those it'll find you places. And I, stupidly, took the bait. I should have stopped right there. But something about those cryptic posts kept me up at night. It wasn't even a normal kind of curiosity, it was more like an obsession. I had to find out if Duskfall was real. I convinced myself it was just another urban legend, like the Bermuda Triangle or some haunted town that people make up stories about online. The kind of thing designed to freak you out but ultimately fake. I started driving one afternoon in early October, no destination in mind. I had a full tank of gas and an empty calendar. I'd scoured the forum posts and pieced together a vague direction, northeast, into the woods where no major roads pass through. I figured it was all nonsense. At worst, I'd waste a few days and come back empty-handed. At best, I'd find something cool, some abandoned town that no one had touched in decades. The sun was starting to set when I saw it. I had been driving down a narrow, overgrown road for what felt like hours, the trees on either side growing thicker and thicker. I was about to turn around when I noticed the sign, Duskfall. The paint was faded, the wood rotted at the edges. It was barely legible, but there was no mistaking it. I couldn't believe my eyes. The road into the town was nothing more than a dirt trail, barely wide enough for my car. The trees overhead formed a thick canopy, blocking out the last traces of daylight. The further I drove, the more my gut tightened. Something felt wrong, but I couldn't turn back now. Then, just as the last rays of the sun disappeared, the trees opened up and there it was, duskfall. The town was small, just a few crumbling buildings scattered along a single main road. The whole place looked like it had been abandoned for decades. No lights, no signs of life, just an eerie stillness that hung in the air like a thick fog. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up as I parked the car at the edge of town. I told myself it was just nerves, that I was overthinking it. I stepped out, my shoes crunching against the gravel road. The silence was suffocating. There were no birds, no insects, not even the sound of wind through the trees. It was as if the whole town was holding its breath. I started walking, my footsteps echoing down the empty street. The buildings around me were old, their wooden walls cracked and sagging, windows covered in a thick layer of grime. There were no lights, no movement. Just the overwhelming sense that I was being watched. I should have left right then and there. But I didn't. Instead, I wandered deeper into the town, curiosity getting the better of me. As I reached what looked like the center of town, I saw it, a well. It was old, made of weathered stone, its opening covered with a rusted metal grate. There was something off about it, something that made my skin crawl just looking at it. I felt a sudden urge to walk away, but before I could, a voice broke the silence. You shouldn't be here. I spun around, my heart hammering in my chest. A man stood at the edge of the street, his face pale and gaunt, his clothes ragged and covered in dirt. He stared at me with wide, unblinking eyes. You need to leave before it's too late, he said, his voice low and shaky. Too late for what? I asked trying to mask the growing unease crawling up my spine. He didn't answer at first. Instead, he walked toward me slowly, his eyes never leaving mine. There are rules, he said. Rules you have to follow if you want to leave Duskfall. Break them, and you'll never make it out. I opened my mouth to ask what the hell he was talking about, but he cut me off. The first rule, he said, his voice barely above a whisper, is never stay outside after dark. I glanced up at the sky realizing for the first time just how quickly the light was fading. The sun had almost completely set, and the shadows were growing longer, stretching unnaturally across the empty street. What happens if I stay outside? I asked, my voice shaking. The man's expression darkened. You don't want to know. He stepped closer, 
his eyes darting around as if he was expecting something to come out of the shadows at any moment. The second rule, he continued, is don't answer the door after midnight. No matter what you hear, no matter who it sounds like. Don't open it. A chill ran down my spine as his words sank in. I swallowed hard, glancing at the old, dilapidated buildings around us. There's a third rule, he said, his voice growing more urgent. If you see something in the mirror that doesn't belong, cover it immediately. If you don't. He trailed off, his eyes widening with fear. If I don't, what? He shook his head. You don't want to find out. I took a step back, my heart pounding in my chest. What else? I asked, my voice barely a whisper. He hesitated for a moment, glancing over his shoulder before speaking again. There's a well in the center of town, he said, pointing to the old stone structure I had seen earlier. Stay away from it. Don't go near it, don't look into it, and whatever you do, don't touch it. I turned to look at the well, my stomach twisting with unease. There was something deeply wrong about it, something that made my skin crawl just thinking about it. And the last rule, he said, his voice dropping to a whisper, is don't trust anyone you meet here. Not even me. His words hit me like a punch to the gut. My mind raced as I tried to process everything he had just told me. Wait, I said, my voice shaking. What do you mean not even you? He didn't answer. Instead, he turned and walked away, disappearing into the shadows between two crumbling buildings. I stood there for a long moment, my heart pounding in my chest, my mind reeling from everything I had just heard. I didn't know what to believe, but one thing was clear, I needed to get out of duskfall. I hurried back to my car, my eyes scanning the growing darkness around me. The sun had completely set, and the town was bathed in an unnatural, shadowless light. I fumbled with my keys, my hands shaking as I tried to unlock the car door. But the door wouldn't open. I yanked on the handle. But it was no use. The door was stuck, as if something was holding it shut from the inside. Panic surged through me as I glanced around, my heart racing. The streets were empty, the buildings dark and lifeless, but I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. I tried the door again, pulling on the handle with all my strength, but it still wouldn't budge. That's when I heard it. Hello, whispering sound, barely audible, coming from the direction of the well. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest as the whispering grew louder, more distinct. It wasn't a single voice, it was a chorus of voices, all whispering in unison, their words blending together in a twisted, haunting melody. I turned slowly, my eyes locking on the well at the center of the square. The whispers were coming from inside it. Against my better judgment, I took a step toward the well, my legs trembling with fear. The whispering grew louder with each step, until it was all I could hear, a deafening, maddening sound that seemed to fill the air around me. I stopped at the edge of the well, my breath coming in short, ragged gasps. The whispers were clearer now, almost intelligible, as if they were calling my name. I leaned forward, peering into the darkness of the well. The whispering stopped. For a moment, there was nothing. Just silence. And then I saw them. Eyes. Staring up at me from the depths of the well, glowing faintly in the darkness. My breath caught in my throat as I stumbled back, my heart pounding in my chest. The whispers returned, louder this time, more insistent. I turned and ran, not caring where I was going, just needing to get away. I don't remember how long I ran, but eventually, I found myself outside one of the old houses at the edge of town. The door was open, light spilling out into the street. Without thinking, I rushed inside and slammed the door shut behind me. The room was small and dimly lit with a single bed in the corner and a cracked mirror hanging on the wall. My heart was still racing as I sat down on the edge of the bed, trying to catch my breath. That's when I noticed it. The mirror. I froze, my eyes locked on the reflection staring back at me. It wasn't me. The figure in the mirror looked like me, but its eyes were wrong. They were hollow, empty, and its smile. Its smile was too wide, too unnatural. I stood up slowly, my hands trembling as I reached for the towel on the nightstand. My reflection watched me with that twisted smile, its eyes never blinking. I grabbed the towel and threw it over the mirror, covering the reflection before it could do anything else. My heart was pounding so hard I thought it might burst out of my chest. The room was silent again, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was still watching me. That night, I barely slept. Every creak, every groan of the old house sent waves of fear crashing through me. I kept expecting to hear the whispers again or the sound of someone knocking at the door. 
but the night passed without incident. When the first light of dawn filtered through the window, I didn't waste any time. I grabbed my things and bolted out of the house, determined to get as far away from duskfall as possible. But as I reached the edge of town, I realized something was wrong. The road was gone. The dirt path that had led me into duskfall had disappeared, replaced by an endless stretch of forest. No matter which direction I turned, there was no sign of the road, no sign of a way out. I was trapped. Thank <laughs> you.